The shooter genre has been around for quite some time now, and these games have their own subgenres from arcade shooters to tactical shooters to arena shooters to battle royales. However, there's an even deeper subgenre to help categorize these shooters, and it's defined by how its movement works. Most games primarily focus on keeping the movement simple. You can go left, right, forwards, and backwards and occasionally up and down. Games like CSGO and Rainbow Six Siege have very limited movement, with the latter not even letting you jump, while other games like Call of Duty and Halo definitely want you to move a bit more. But even then, it's still limited, especially in the Y axis. But then there's games that just let you go crazy. These games are considered movement shooters. But first, some history. Players have always wanted to go fast and fly and be free, breaking the boundaries put into games, which is why speedrunning is so insanely popular. But when it came to online multiplayer games, this was never really an option. You stayed pretty grounded and stayed within the limitations set by the developers, until one day, the rocket jump was discovered. First seen in Doom, it was popularized in Quake. Players discovered a technique to boost themselves higher or further by shooting the ground with a rocket. By exploiting the physics of the Quake engine, even more advanced movement techniques were discovered. There was circle jumping, strafing, and bunny hopping. All of these movements became so popular and so useful at the highest competitive level of Quake. They were so prominent that every single one of these crazy movement techniques, including rocket jumping, were all added into future Quake games as intentional mechanics. Rocket jumping has since made appearances in other FPS titles. For example, you can do this with the soldier in Team Fortress 2. While this mechanic was the beginning of the movement shooter, it had limitations and also was something that required practice, meaning that it wasn't as simple for newer players to try. So the idea of a movement shooter wasn't really mainstream. Games would still dabble with trying new movement mechanics, but it was never the focus. That is, until a developer changed the game. Picture this, it's 2014. Call of Duty has released one of its most forgettable titles. You probably don't even know which one I'm talking about. But you're playing some really fun single player games like Bioshock Infinite. And in Bioshock Infinite, you love this cool grappling mechanic that you have where you can zip around and zoom around this flying city. You think, man, this thing would be so sick in my Call of Duty game, for real, for real. Then in March, a new developer by the name of Respawn drops Titanfall. Maybe you were drawn in by the big robots, but you stayed for the movement. You've seen wall running before in Prince of Persia and Assassin's Creed, but never like this. You can wall run and double jump and shoot and grapple and zip and oh my god, it's incredible. People are blown away by this and it's a hit, sort of. It's no Call of Duty game, but it gets a strong following. And Call of Duty sees this and wants in. At the end of 2014, Call of Duty released Advanced Warfare, which had movement but not like Titanfall. So in their next Black Ops game, they go all in on the movement shooter idea. Essentially, they copy Titanfall. Black Ops 3 had wall running and all of the other stuff that you would expect in a game like this. These games helped bring movement shooters to the mainstream and showed a lot more people their potential. However, while these games were decently successful, I don't think people were ready because at the time, a lot of people, especially the fans of Call of Duty, did not like the direction that these games were going. Today, a lot of people talk about how amazing and underrated Black Ops 3 is in hindsight but people were getting really tired of the futuristic aesthetic and crazy movement and missed the grounded approach of the original Call of Duty games. However, in 2016, Titanfall's developer Respawn doubled down and made Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2 is a masterclass in movement and arcade shooters. It's easily the peak of what a multiplayer movement shooter could be. 
But unfortunately, Titanfall 2's release date was sandwiched between Infinite Warfare, another Call of Duty movement shooter, which fans and critics also didn't love, and Battlefield 1, a throwback to World War 1. Titanfall 2 was a critical success, but the sales were not good enough to warrant a sequel, and Infinite Warfare made fans desperate for the old Call of Duty formula. So it was at this point in time where developers stopped making multiplayer movement shooters. Call of Duty toned down the movement in Black Ops 4 and completely rebooted their franchise in Modern Warfare, and games just stayed pretty grounded for a while. In 2017, Lawbreakers would try and make a movement shooter, and it died on impact. The saddest part is, if this game came out right now, it might have seen a lot more success than it did at the time. Then, Overwatch released and would create characters with different kinds of movement, but they were limited and tied to specific heroes, so it wasn't really a movement shooter. By this point, if you were looking for a movement shooter, you're going to be out of luck. The only insane movement you'd find would be in single player campaigns, like Doom 2016. Games like Fortnite and Destiny 2 had movement of their own from building or just doing weird stuff, but these weren't games that primarily focused and worked around the movement. Movement shooter fans wanted more, and some just kept Titanfall 2 alive for as long as possible. But then, through the scraps of Titanfall's engine, Respawn would come and save the day. Kind of. In 2019, Apex Legends dropped out of nowhere, but was a huge surprise hit. The gunplay was silky smooth, and the movement was familiar. It was like Titanfall, but toned down a bit, and characters schmooved. Grappling hooks, zip lines, jump pads, speed boosts. This game was scratching that itch for a movement shooter. Players and content creators like Moki Sniper began to discover new movement techniques like wall bouncing, tap strafing, super gliding, bunny hop healing, some of which are still here, others were patched out. This game was like Titanfall on a leash. For most movement shooter fans, this was enough, but for others, it was just the beginning. Which brings us to modern day gaming. Every big game has dabbled with movement mechanics. Fortnite has some crazy movement now, they have that hammer thing, or they introduce Dragon Ball Z clouds, or jump pads. There's literally so many ways to move in Fortnite, so like, I don't even know if half these things still exist, because I can't keep up with Fortnite, it's too much. Halo Infinite added grappling hooks and thrusters, Battlefield 2049 added crazy movement as well, Warzone players are learning how to do some crazy parachute glide movement tricks, Apex is still Apex, and more and more people are looking back fondly on Black Ops 3. I think it's because people are becoming a lot better at gaming, and a lot more interested in practicing and learning movement mechanics. Players are making crazy clips in their favorite games, showing off insane movement and getting millions of plays. There's clearly interest, and we as a society have collectively began loving movement in our games. If there ever was a time to release the next big movement shooter, now is the time. Titanfall 3, Call of Duty X, Battlefield Infinity. I think people will be ready and willing to practice and become movement gods. However, for one of these to succeed, it needs to make sure it learns from the mistakes of past attempts. The battle royale genre created many different games that explored the idea of insane movement, from Spellbreak to Hyperscape to Blood Hunt. However, these games failed to attract that audience. While a game like Hyperscape let you fly up in the sky and teleport and disappear, it broke two of the most fundamental rules of a movement shooter. One, the core movement must be smooth. And two, readability. For a movement shooter to work, the default movement needs to feel smooth. Everything needs to harmonize with each other from running, to sliding, to jumping, to climbing. It should be second nature, and most importantly, it should not slow down momentum. If the movement is clunky, it won't matter that you can fly. If it feels jank 90% of the time, it's just not fun. Then there's readability. Essentially, it can't be impossible to track down people. It's one of the core ideas behind balancing legends, according to ex-Apex developer Brian Vitovic. Brian talked to me about how important it is that players don't feel like they can't read where their enemies are, and games like Hyperscape ran into this issue a lot. Titanfall 2 also had this problem as well, but Respawn designed and balanced that game with this idea in mind, and they learned from their mistakes with Titanfall when they designed Apex Legends. Brian explained this with the Brownian fluid problem. When we introduce quick moving, unpredictable movement, it is a nightmare, right, to try and like do that. You're doing, the, this is a, what was called in Titanfall 2, 
about the Brownian fluid problem. When you when you don't have a front line, when you can't understand where the action is happening, when people mm. can appear behind you, above you, left, right, and center, you don't have a through line to understand the combat. In the beginning of Apex, if y'all remember, Pathfinder was so broken and he was everywhere and one Pathfinder could go and whip around the whole lobby and kill everybody. And it was insane. That's too far. It's an extreme example. But that's why Pathfinder got nerfed into the sun because it was too much. So if a developer wants to create an insane movement shooter, they need to balance their game around the movement so that it doesn't become impossible to fight enemies who have mastered the mechanics. Don't get me wrong, people will always be good at games and stomp on noobs, but you never want to create a scenario where the enemy becomes literally invincible. Your average player should never find it impossible to kill an enemy. Creating a game is not easy, it's a tightrope, and these rules aren't set in stone, but I think they are useful to think about when creating a movement shooter. So if you're a developer, you know, just think about it. I made this video because I genuinely believe that the culture around shooters has changed enough for a movement shooter to finally thrive. I think there's more excitement around games with cool movement. There's still a void in the market for a movement shooter. Who knows what? <clears throat> Titanfall 3. But what do you think? Do you also want a new movement shooter to come out? And if so, would you prefer a sequel to an existing franchise or a whole new IP? Let me know in the comments down below. As of recording, the marathon trailer just dropped and it looks really great and maybe it's a movement shooter? I know it's gonna be an extraction shooter, but like, you know, por que no los dos? Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I like making these discussion type videos every now and then, and if there's a topic you want me to talk about in the future, let me know in the comments, and I'll think about talking about it. Anyways, I'll catch you later.